So Sunshine PHP, we sell out at 350. Um, I keep Sunshine PHP that size because I really like the venue that we hold it at. Mm -hmm. They've been great with me. The venue is one one mile away from the Miami airport, so it's nice and easy. There's a shuttle there. People can fly into the airport. They hop on the shuttle, and in minutes, they're at the hotel. So it's really easy to do. Um, so I like holding the conference there. And that uh, that venue, unless they, unless they add on to the hotel, we can only handle 350 people so that is the sellout point and sunshine php has sold out the last five years wow I'm so, so uh, happy yeah. I'm going. I'm so happy I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> and and this year this year should also be comparable in size. I mean mm. everything's really going well. We're we're mm. getting everything. I mean they even changed. We changed the way that we we, we lay out the room. Uh, the first couple of years for Sunshine PHP, we laid out the room length longwise, right? right? So we had rows of chairs from one end to the other longwise, and. And then like the third year, I said, you know what, that's a little bit crowded and it's really difficult for people to get in and out of that room. Um, so what if we turned it sideways yeah. and made the room wider instead of longer? So we did that and, and it worked out awesome. It made for a larger stage. Then we put two screens in the front too so people could see it on either end of the room. Yep. And uh, and it's worked out really well. We still fill the room. It's, uh, it's still, you know you have to make sure you get to the keynotes fast because you will you will not have a seat right. if you right. get there too late uh, because it's it's kind of hard because it is capacity seating. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have a lot of extra chairs in there. <laughs> there's enough chairs for everybody, but there's not extra chairs. So sometimes seeing the empty chair in a in a fully uh, fully filled room is yeah. hard to see the empty chairs and people end up standing in the back. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so what kind of topics? will I be hoping to see when I'm there this, uh, this, this year? You know, I, I'm glad you brought that up because I did something a little different this year. So in previous years, we always picked the hottest topics and Sunshine is known for, for having a really good lineup. Mm. I mean, we, we have 30 speakers plus, you know, plus the five keynote speakers, which is, is 35 you know, speakers for the entire event. That's that's large. That's, that's a very lot. big that's a lot. for an event yeah. to have thirty five speakers. Because not only are we paying for the airfare, but in a hotel for all of them. But it's just a lot of speakers. Yeah. Um, excuse me. Uh, many conferences they will have speakers give two talks per speaker. Hmm. I don't do that with Sunshine. I have one talk per speaker. And the reason is, is because I want that speaker to, to do their best job on that talk, and I also want to make it. Um, you know, it also means that there's more community at mm -hmm. the conference, right? Mm -hmm. Because instantly you've already got 35 mm -hmm. community people right there mm -hmm. in a conference uh, that people want to see, right? Mm -hmm. These are the these are the bloggers and the speakers and the contributors to different packages, yeah. and so people want to see them. They yeah. want to be able to talk and and hear them speak. So. Uh, what I've done this year is a little bit different because in previous years, uh, we included frameworks as part of the talks, right? Okay. So uh, intro to Laravel, intro to Zend, uh, intro to Symfony, what have you. Mm -hmm. This year, I didn't do that. This year, this year, we said, you know what? No framework talks. Right. Now, that's not because we're anti-framework, because I'm not. I'm like, everybody should be using a framework for their development. Mm -hmm. But I decided, you know what? Laravel has a really awesome event, uh, you know, every year, one in the U.S., one in one in uh, Europe, and now they're even branching out further. Zend has their own with ZenCon. Um, you know, Symfony has Symfony Lives. So all these leading frameworks, they have their own conferences mm -hmm. for people to attend and learn. Mm -hmm. I don't need to teach them frameworks anymore. No. You know, obviously frameworks are, are wide enough used. I don't need to focus on that anymore. But PHP has changed so much over, over you know, the last you know, five to eight years yeah. that we really need to educate developers. We really need to educate ourselves on these changes in PHP. Mm. There are so many great packages out there that we need to learn these packages. So what I did with my talks, and if you look on the schedule, there are no framework talks. Mm. It is all PHP mm. talks. It is, it is um, you know, talks around 
doing professional development in PHP. Um, and now if a speaker happens to use a framework as part of their code examples, that's a different matter. That may be there, but uh, but it's not going to be any framework specific talks. And again, it's not because we're anti-framework. That is not the case. It's just because I feel that that's not what the community really needs down here in, in, in South Florida and, and maybe even in many other places in the world. Yes, but, uh, definitely. I yeah. definitely agree with that. It's actually something mm -hmm. that drove me to it because when I went down the list of, of the talks, um, that actually popped out to me as, as it's actually talking about good practices in PHP rather than this is the hot new trend. And yeah. that, that, yeah, that pushed me in that direction. Um, oh, well, I'm glad, I'm glad you noticed it. Yeah. We that, hadn't talked about it before. No, so. no, it was, um, so I, w what I did is I, I went through a lot of, because uh, I wanted to do one international conference. I wanted to go to one place uh, this year. And I had a couple sort of that I was looking at and I was comparing the talks. And uh, that was something that really sort of stood out to me. Uh, because the other, the other ones, it's kind of like um, a pickle mix of themes. Yeah. So I like the way that that was, that was addressed. So, yeah. so how many, how many papers do you get on average to one of these conferences? So I'm, I'm going to venture to guess and say that Sunshine PHP gets more than anybody. <laughs> and, and the reason I say that is because I also, I also uh, help with the call for papers for ZenCon, right. which is, which is the, you know, the, the largest PHP conference, um, PHP specific conference, mm. uh, and, and Sunshine PHP also being, you know, uh, now the largest uh, PHP conference. Mm. Um, you know, so we average about six to 700 submissions. Wow. Um, now, I mean, I have spoke with other organizers of other PHP events, mm. and they they talk about having 200, 250, 300 submissions. So I think we probably get the most. Um, but but that being said, I mean, it's it's Miami. Come on, it's Miami in February. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was also a selling point as well, I should say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, everybody else is going to be cold and snowy and frozen, and, and we're going to be in Miami partying in 70 degrees. Especially here in <laughs> the enough. UK, yeah, where yeah. it's uh, windy and cold, and uh, we've yes. had to knock up the heating. Um, wow. So, I mean, how do you go about sort of whittling that down and finding the talks that you want to use? Do you, do you start with a theme and then look for the papers that match that theme, or do you wrap the theme around the talks that come out and, and sort of shout out to you? That's, it's inter interesting that you bring that up. We do have a theme. Every year I have a theme for Sunshine PHP. This year it is lead. I right. like my single word themes um, <laughs> because I like keeping it simple. So this year it's about leading. Last year it was communication and, uh, and or communicate. Right. And in previous years we've had have, uh, other iterations. This year it's lead. lead. So you'll yeah. find that our keynotes are centered around lead because I do pick the keynotes with the central theme in mind. Mm. However, the talks are not that. I do not pay attention to the theme when it comes to choosing talks. Right. Uh, for the talks, it's very much what is the community hot about? Uh, what am I finding that uh, that people need as I'm doing consulting? Um, and that is pretty much how we choose the talks. Now, the, the talks are iterative, right? Because with that many talks, you can't possibly just pick out 30 out of 700, right? Mm -hmm. It just it's mm. not that not that easy. So what we do is me and a few other people that I've that I've asked to be on our committee for choosing talks. Uh, we we of course Open CFP is the application that we use for uh, people to submit talks. After that, I export the data from there into another application which I call TalkRate. Um, it was created by one of our user group members uh, okay. down here in South Florida. He was gracious enough to create it and uh, years ago, and we've just kept continued using it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it is out on, uh, if you go to GitHub at Sunshine PHP, you'll find it there. It is open source. It's freely available for anybody who wants to use it. Um, but that being said, so I export the talks into there from OpenCFP. Mm. And then uh, that allows us then to go in and rate the talks one to five stars. Right. So we go through all 700 of them. We look at every single talk. We look at every single speaker and we rate them one to five stars. Right. Uh, now, that doesn't mean that anybody who's a one star is necessarily bad. It just means that it didn't strike us as something that was really hot right now. Maybe the speaker isn't very experienced. At Sunshine PHP, we mm. do require the speakers to be experienced. I, 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 
I know there's a lot of contention. People say a lot of different things about that. My take is if people are paying two and three hundred dollars to sit in a seat and see the best talks, I'm going to give them the best talks, and that means that I'm going to give them experienced speakers who are able to to do a good job. I know they're able to give them a good job, to mm-hmm. do a good job. It doesn't mean that somebody new can't speak, not at all. It just means that I know these people have given talks and that they're going to do a good job. I don't, I'm not gambling. I don't mm. gamble because uh, if people are paying money for that. Mm. Now, we do have an Uncon. If you want to if you want to come and attend Sunshine PHP and give a talk in any way, you can do that in the Uncon. And the Uncon is very well uh, received at Sunshine. We end up with 10 to 20 people mm. uh, in the Uncon per uh, talk slot, and and they do they do actually go to the Uncon talks. Um, But after we've done that, after we've rated them one to five stars, then we make another sweep through. I pretty much, uh, from there, I export the four into five stars. Mm Mm-hmm. And I go through and I and and pretty much just make sure that we have a good round lineup. I would, you know, all the talks can't be PHP unit. All the talks can't be security. All the talks can't be continuous delivery. Yeah. Um, you know, so I go through and I make sure we have a good round schedule out of that. Uh, I usually end up down to about now the four and five stars. That is uh, almost 200 talks, right? Mm. So we're still at 200 yeah. talks that are four and five stars, yeah. and we still got to get down to 30. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we do iteratively. We keep on chipping away until we get down to the point where we where we have 30 talks. Wow. And um, and sometimes I do have to go back and dip in the one, two, and three stars. I can't mm. just get them all out of the four and five stars to make sure that I have a good round schedule. That must take so much time to to to, to do and prepare. I mean, we haven't it even got, got to the point of actually Actually, just organizing sponsors and the venue. This is just talking about the talks. I mean, how, yeah. how long does that process usually take? So it's actually quite fast. Wow. Um, okay. So be- because me and the other folks that I've asked to contribute uh, in this way, uh, we've gotten pretty good at it. <laughs> so uh, so that it could take up to two weeks. Mm-hmm. So so it's two weeks, not solid work. I mean, it's an hour here, an hour there. Uh, it takes about two weeks to get down to what talks are we going to, what, do we want to reach out to the speakers and accept? Sure, uh, sure. Yeah, so, but it is, it is, uh, it is arduous. It's uh, because you're, we're, we're reading the abstract for 700 talks and we're reading the speaker bios for 700 <laughs> talks. We're doing, we're doing YouTube searches and joined in searches to see if they've spoken in the past. Yeah. Uh, we're looking at user groups sometimes i'm reaching directly out to the speakers and saying hey by the way i don't see that you put experience in here but your talk topic was was uh something that i think is is attractive do you have any speaking experience and sometimes they say no and then i you know we do reject them yeah uh but sometimes they say yes i'm sorry i didn't put it in there and then they send us uh they send us you know sometimes youtube videos sometimes uh you know where the conference has taken a video of them Mm. speaking in the past and it's worked out 